Today, it is finally time for another Anthem update, discussing the latest news and information on Bioware's new game. And so, let's get started. What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and yes, we finally have another Anthem update. It has been a while, simply because there hasn't been enough information to warrant a full video. But today, that is changing, and in fact, the first piece of information somewhat addresses that. Now, most of this information today is coming from our boy, Brennan Holmes, who is the technical design director at Bioware. He is extremely active on the Anthem Reddit and answers a lot of fan questions and divulges a lot of information. So we're going a lot through him. Now, the first Reddit question was, Hey Bioware, I was curious. I noticed some good questions being posted by others, myself included, and you haven't been responding. Is this due to the fact that we're overwhelming you, or that you can't discuss it, or is it because we can possibly expect these things to be in there already? And then goes on to say that they're concerned about Anthem. Now, Brennan Holmes does reply. We're just at the end of a milestone right now, so we're all pretty heads down. Or at least that's why I haven't been as active over the past couple of weeks. And it's true, it's not like I've just been ignoring making this video. There has been really no new information for quite a while. Beyond that, there are some broad topics that I can't really speak about right now. Monetization, progression, PvP, and PvE, etc. And usually, the more specific the question, the harder it is to answer. So, that makes a ton of sense. I'm actually very interested that he even typed the phrase PvP. We have seen no indication that there's going to be PvP whatsoever, at least to my knowledge. So... You know, maybe he's saying that we aren't ready to announce it's not going to be in the game, or there is going to be some bare bones or some version of PvP. That's actually pretty interesting. Now, someone then replies, What can we expect to see from Anthem at E3? Brennan Holmes replies, Good question. I know we're confirmed for EA Play. I'm not totally sure what the plan is for E3 proper. Another edit, EA Play, I definitely can't talk about specifics, but we did get a sneak peek at a little something on the side at our milestone review, and it was very cool. It's likely to be shown at EA Play. So, some information there. Let's break it down. EA Play, for those of you who may not know, EA Play is kind of EA's own thing at E3 a couple of days before E3. So EA reveals all of its own stuff over a couple of days and then the actual E3 starts, which EA is also involved in often, but it's kind of a way to differentiate EA stuff from the clutter, frankly, that happens at E3. Now, the big question here is, what is going to be revealed? We are almost guaranteed some form of new gameplay trailer. We've had the same gameplay trailer for forever. It's playing in the background, but there's really no other option. It's the only gameplay that we have so far. So we're likely 100% guaranteed, I would say, to get another one if Anthem is going to have a presence at EA Play, which again has been confirmed. The real question is, is it going to be in a playable state? Well, actually, it definitely could be. A couple of years ago, I was actually invited out to EA Play for a Titanfall 2 event. Really fun game, actually super underrated. It's always on these crazy sales, so pick it up if it's super cheap. Great campaign, great PvP, honestly guys. But that aside, even though Titanfall 2 was coming out all the way in the fall, we got to play the game. It was at a playable state. We all, me and a bunch of other YouTubers got to play it. And then we were given a B-roll footage, like extra gameplay that wasn't in trailers that we could use in our videos. Anthem may do a similar thing. Remember, even though it's delayed until early 2019, we know that so far, it was originally slotted for the fall, just like Titanfall 2 was. So it's very possible that perhaps the beginning mission or a certain mission is going to be at a playable state at EA Play, which would give us a ton of information on how Anthem works and just what the game is really all about. So that's really cool and here's hoping I get to go and if I do guys, you guys will get all of the available information, I'm telling you. 
Now, since we're on the topic of E3, a question that came up last E3 was, is Anthem going to be an Xbox exclusive? It was shown off at Xbox's conference. Well, there was a report that came out somewhat recently claiming that Microsoft had exclusive marketing rights for a bunch of games, including Borderlands 3, which hasn't been announced yet, and Anthem. Now, this basically means that if there's an Anthem trailer at the very end, the Xbox One logo pops up instead of the PlayStation logo, right? It doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be exclusives, but it's done to make you associate Anthem in this case with a certain console and then you're more likely to get Anthem for the Xbox One. You always see the Xbox One pop up in every Anthem trailer. So keep that in mind. I'll keep you guys updated with exclusives, but although it's by no means certain, that would be an indication that Xbox has potentially exclusives, maybe DLCs come out early or something like that for Anthem. All right, now moving on from there, we got a little bit of information about the loot system. So a Redditor made a post basically coming from Destiny 2. There's actually a lot of, you know, concerned and disgruntled Destiny 2 players that are asking a lot of questions about Anthem and that are very interested in Anthem. So this guy asked the question basically saying, hey, are you going to do anything about duplicate loot? Saying that if they're not random rolls in Anthem, perhaps you could get a certain weapon, the Jara's Wrath, which is a weapon we did see in the gameplay trailer. And if you get a duplicate one, you can dismantle it and get the essence of Jara's Wrath. You get 10 essences, then you can upgrade your original Jara's Wrath, make it a better weapon. Maybe it has an extra perk slot, an extra modification slot, etc. That's not a terrible idea, and it's basically just a way to avoid the situation going on in Destiny 2 right now, where your second, your third, your 300th Better Devils is no different than your original Better Devils, Masterworks not included, and that's really hurting the replayability of Destiny 2. Now, Brandon Holmes did reply. Philosophically, we want all items you get to have some kind of value. While we still can't really speak too much on the specifics quite yet, sorry, I'd be interested in what other kinds of mechanics you guys find interesting from other games. And then a bunch of people do give replies, you know, Division and so on. For me, actually, The Division was a game that did that really right. The Division has random roles, but it also has a recalibration station where if you're one perk away from getting the god roll, you can actually roll a single perk on a weapon alleviating a lot of the BS that comes with a purely random roll system. It's good to hear Brennan Holmes go on record and saying, we want all items you get to have some kind of value, be it in you know the materials you get for dismantling them or random rolls is certainly in play with Anthem. Now, continuing on from there, another very interesting topic is that of hotfixes. And again, this is just the concerned Destiny 2 players trying to speak out. Right now, Destiny 2 just got the March update. It was actually a very good update, the Go Faster update. It changed a lot of stuff. A lot of people are back into the game, but it took six months to get. And a lot of these issues that it's fixing were identified within the first couple of weeks of the game coming out. The delay between concerns and updates in Destiny 2 has been a huge problem. And someone did ask, Mass Effect 3, Mass Effect Andromeda, and Dragon Age Inquisition multiplayer allowed Bioware to make changes server-side for weapon and powers balancing and even enemy spawns. Will Anthem's back end allow similar adjustments or will it require more traditional patching? So, Brennan Holmes replied, we're currently getting a lot of our live tech up and running. This includes ensuring that various types of content can be hotfixed. We'd like to be able to do at least as much as we have in previous titles, if not more. If there's interest, we could probably talk a bit more about this in the future, though I suspect most people are probably interested in what versus how. So right there, that's very good news, saying that if something is wrong, if, you know, spawns are wrong, if weapons are overpowered, underpowered, they can potentially go in via the back end and hotfix stuff without having to have these major patches like in Destiny 2 that just take so darn long. 
Now, someone replied to that saying, please do talk about the hows and whys for bug fixes, buffs and nerfs and tech issues and the like. With Destiny, there were gripes with the limited vault space and the community didn't really receive a why they couldn't expand it, just very vague promises or shifting focus. Once they finally explained why, the community quieted down. That's actually a really good point. Now, Brennan Holmes replies to that saying, for sure, I think we still need to get a good handle on all of the different ways that we want to communicate with you folks. Personally, I really like how Riot of League of Legends handles some of their communication about gameplay changes, specifically Meddler's quick gameplay thoughts. It provides a lot of insight into what they're thinking about and gives the fans an excellent opportunity to contribute to a focused discussion. Now, if you're not familiar, the quick gameplay thoughts are basically just the developers talking about what they're thinking about doing, what they're thinking seems too good, seems underpowered, they want to change, and the community can get involved and say, no, 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 it's not overpowered, here's why, and all this stuff. And that's just a lot of a better way than everything done internally, no communication, and they come out with this update and the community's like, what the heck are you doing? That happened in the first patch for Destiny 2, where they made basically no sandbox changes and everyone went, what are you doing? You know, pulse rifles need a buff. What are you guys thinking? That, that went super poorly. So it's really awesome to hear. And I know a lot of you guys watching right now are from a Destiny background, you know, seeing Bioware respond to these basically concerned Destiny players and saying, we are not doing that. We are going to communicate. Here's where we're looking for sources of information about how we're going to communicate. And we're going to be able to hotfix stuff. We're going to be able to do all this stuff. A lot of the Destiny 2 concerns, well, frankly, they look like they're not going to be concerns with Anthem. And that is a very, very good thing. Okay, moving on from there, we have a couple of minor things to go over. Someone made a comment talking about death penalties, saying essentially that he would find it cool that if you died, you would lose your javelin, maybe starting out in a clone and you'd have to go and get your javelin back, somewhat of a Dark Souls approach. Essentially having a heavy penalty for dying in Anthem. Brennan Holmes replied, Anthem isn't really a roguelike, so you won't lose all of your progress when you die. Originally, we were looking at some fairly punitive death penalties, but we've walked a lot of those back, mainly because they were just that, penalties, which don't feel very fun or engaging. I mean, the entire Dark Souls franchise is built off penalties, so uh, it's clearly got some sort of interest in that kind of mechanic. But in case you were wondering what the death penalties would be like in Anthem, there it is. It's probably going to be more traditional, just respawning, losing a checkpoint, etc. rather than something, you know, more than that. After that, the last thing we're going to cover is a question, will Anthem feature the new ray tracing tech from Nvidia? It's basically the best graphics on the market. Brennan Holmes responded, we had some discussions around this, but the amount of work to integrate is more than we can afford to do right now, especially as it would probably just be for the very high end PCs. Someone replied, do you think it's possible for it to become standard in two to three console generations from now? Brennan Holmes replied, I'm not really a graphics guy, so I'm not really sure. Two generations from now would be like 10 plus years though, which is a really long time when it comes to hardware. So if not this, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some other fancy technique in this space. So if you were at all wondering about that, there is your answer. In addition, there was some articles that came out about Bioware's relationship with EA. One article saying that Bioware would have actually gone under if EA hadn't acquired them. Another one from the ex-director at Bioware saying that EA really wasn't too overbearing and actually allowed them to have a lot of creativity in their games. But I don't really want to go over those because they don't necessarily mean anything too much about Anthem. And anytime you mention EA, people get heated in the comments. Like, it is insane. All I want to say about that is this. If you are someone that is saying Anthem is 100% going to be an amazing game, nothing can go wrong, you're being a dingus. Things could absolutely go wrong. EA could push microtransactions too far on Anthem. It is possible. In the same vein, if you're someone who is saying, and I see a lot of comments like this, 
EA is ruining Anthem. It's going to be a trash game. There's no way Anthem is going to be good. You are also being a complete dingus. EA has published some amazing games. Titanfall 2, the Battlefield series, one of my favorite series of all time, published by EA. The fact of the matter is that we just don't know. There are some extremely valid community concerns that we should be aware of, we should be asking and pestering Bioware to answer and really going into what they're doing with microtransactions, especially because EA undoubtedly ruined Star Wars Battlefront 2, but at the same time, I can't imagine a company run by humans human beings with thinking brains would do the same thing that got unbelievable community outrage twice in a row and ruin another flagship franchise. Like, I just can't see them logically doing that. Again, it's possible, we should be concerned, we should be vigilant as a community, but it's not confirmed, there's a bunch of stuff we don't know just yet, so we really just have to ask the right questions and keep informed. In any event guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Anthem content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickCacus. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.